Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 3 for September the 20th, 2020. We're still in Unit 1 entitled Struggles with Love. And our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is Haunted by Shame. Our devotion reading is taken from uh, Psalm 51. Our background scripture is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 42. And we'll be studying today from uh, the book of Genesis chapter 42 verses 6 through 25. Our key verse reads, Reuben replied, Didn't I tell you not to sin against the boy? But you wouldn't listen. Now we must give an accounting for his blood. It's taken from Genesis chapter 42, verse 22 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explain why Joseph's brothers interpreted their misfortune as punishment for their sins. Secondly, to sense the need for wholeness in your personal relationships. And the third aim is to identify ways to accept God's forgiveness and strive to offer grace to those who mistreat you. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, Dreams Become Reality. Our second outline is entitled, Guilt Confessed. And then our third outline is entitled, Compassion Aroused. And we are certainly uh, thanking and praising God for another privilege, another great opportunity to share our Sunday School lesson with you. We're certainly uh, continuously praying uh, for each and every family uh, as we uh, continue to go through this pandemic. And we certainly know that the Word of God is right. And we certainly want to continue to engage uh, in Scripture that we might be enlightened, that we might be comforted, and that we might be encouraged uh, even as we face these difficult days. Uh, we certainly encourage you now to get uh, your Bible and, and be prepared to uh, take some Scripture notes that we're going to share with you today. We have a lot to unpack today that we want to uh, at least put you on a path uh, that we might be able to understand this lesson but I want to read some of this biblical context it is a bit lengthy for this lesson and then we're going to get to our outlines but the account of Joseph's life uh, graphically illustrates God's um, predetermined plan to save his chosen people through Joseph by orchestrating circumstances to bring him to power in Egypt. Each recorded experience of Joseph's uh, was a stage in God's plan. In Genesis chapter 37, stage 1 ends with Joseph's uh, being sold as a slave to distant relatives and then as a slave in Egypt. In stage number 2, uh, Genesis chapter 39, Joseph is tempted, he's tested and falsely imprisoned, but matures in his relationship with God. Uh, while Joseph was imprisoned uh, in Genesis chapter 40, God prepares him for the next stage of his destiny by enabling him to interpret the dreams of uh, two of Pharaoh's servants. Uh, this God-empowered ability led to the opportunity to interpret Pharaoh's dreams and his subsequent elevation to second in political authority in Egypt. That's in Genesis chapter 41. Uh, so the severity of the famine prompted Jacob to send his sons to Egypt to buy grain. Uh, Joseph now possessed the power to bring his family to Egypt. The final stage in God's plan for bringing his chosen people to Egypt was set when Joseph and his estranged brothers met face to face. That's in Genesis chapter 42 where our lesson uh, context begins today uh, from verses 6 through 25. I would also encourage you uh, as we uh, seek to unpack this, this passage of scripture that we would engage in 
uh, the term typology. Uh, typology is essentially uh, it's a method of interpreting some parts of scripture uh, by seeing a pattern which an earlier statement uh, sets up by which a latter is explained. And what I mean by that is uh, we want to look at Joseph in this context as a type of Christ, a type of Messiah. Um, we see some um, telling similarities uh, in the fact that uh, Joseph has been anointed. Um, he has been placed uh, second in command to Pharaoh. Uh, he's now governor. Uh, he's responsible uh, for a lot of activity. Uh, in Egypt, uh, he's the man, if you will. Um, uh, he is someone who can execute authority. He has wealth. He has power. He has everything. Um, but uh, what we want to be able to see is that Joseph's uh, uh, context here, uh, he is intent on saving uh, his family, his brothers, uh, his household, if you will. He's intent on bringing some awareness uh, to his brother's activities uh, and how they treated him, uh, but they thought that he was dead. Uh, they thought that uh, he was no more, but now they have to come to terms uh, with his brother uh, with Joseph being an authority now and able to execute judgment and we see these things in Christ's life and his ability to come to this earth uh, he has been uh, ridiculed he's been despised he's been rejected uh, he's been crucified and they believe that when they put Christ to death that that was the end of him uh, but God raised him on the third day with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And subsequently this Christ, this Messiah, that they believed that they had crucified and done away with would be the same one that they would have to confront for salvation. And so we see these similarities in Joseph's life. Uh, but I, I would offer... Uh, uh, the fifth chapter of uh, the Gospel of John, uh, chapter chapter five, verses thirty nine through forty, uh, and I hope that you would read that and 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 hope that you would be able to put in context that uh, all of the scriptures, uh, particularly in the Old Testament, they speak of Christ in some shape or form, and what God was about to do uh, through His only begotten Son. So. Uh, having said that, let's get into uh, this lesson today as we pick it up from uh, Genesis chapter 42, verses 6 uh, through 17. And I want to read this uh, from the NIV translation. Now Joseph was the governor of the land, the person who sold grain to all its people. So when Joseph's brothers arrived, they bowed down to him with their faces to the ground. Verse 7, as soon as Joseph saw his brothers, he recognized them, but he pretended uh, to be a stranger and spoke harshly to them. Where do you come from, he asked. From the land of Cana, they replied, to buy food. Although Joseph recognized his brothers, they did not recognize him. Then he remembered his dreams about them and said to them, You are spies. You have come to see where our land is unprotected. Verse 10, No, my lord, they answered. Your servants have come to buy food. Uh, verse 11, where are, all, where are all the sons? We are all the sons of one man. Your servants are honest men, not spies. No, he said to them. You have come to see where our land is unprotected. But they replied, Your servants were twelve brothers, the sons of one man, who lives in the land of Cana. The youngest is now with our father, and one is no more. Verse 14, Joseph said to them, It is just as I told you, you are spies. 
and this is how you will be tested. As surely as Pharaoh lives, you will not leave this place unless your youngest brother comes here. Verse 16, send one of your number to get your brother. The rest of you will be kept in prison so that your words may be tested to see if you are telling the truth. If you are not, then as surely as Pharaoh lives, you are spies. Verse 17, then he put them all in custody uh, for three days. Jacob's concern uh, for the welfare of his family during the severe famine affecting Egypt and Canaan led him to command his ten sons to go to Egypt where grain was plentiful. Fearing a similar fate for Benjamin that he suspected had happened to Joseph, he kept Benjamin at home. It is believed that the initial uh, hesitance of the ten to obey their father was that the name of Egypt reminded them of Joseph and what they had done to him. Uh, these were men whose spiritual consciousness needed awakening in order to restore fellowship with God and within their family. So when you look at this lesson in its context and you look at what Joseph is trying to do here, uh, certainly with the help of God as his aid, uh, is to bring about some awareness of uh, the thing that his brothers have done. Uh, this, this would be the equivalent to unconfessed sins. Uh, they have never, and we'll get there a little bit later in our context here, but Joseph is going through this testing period of his brothers. They don't recognize him but uh, he recognizes them. Uh, some years have passed since they have seen one another and so they believe, uh, Joseph's brothers believe that that they have uh, 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 certainly put him in harm's way so as to lose his life but now this famine has come uh, uh, and, and, and Jacob sends his sons to buy grain not knowing that uh, Joseph is still alive. His brothers don't know that Joseph is still alive and now in authority. But it's just striking how God is, is behind the scenes working this thing out through Joseph to, to try his brothers in a way to get them to reflect on their activity or their sin, uh, 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 what they have done to their own brother. And, and this is the only way, as you look at this lesson, you might say, well, I don't understand why Joseph is doing all of this. But let me just say this. In order for us to be saved, in order for us to be reconciled, in order for us to be awakened, in order to restore fellowship with God and with one another, we have to come to terms with, with who we are and what we are and what we have done. Uh, we have to cooperate, if you will, in the plan of salvation. We have to actually uh, confess our sins uh, to God. And this is something that we practice even on, on First Sunday. We are supposed to, as Scripture provides for us from First Corinthians chapter 11, we are supposed to examine ourselves. And these brothers of Joseph's, they have... Uh, 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 caused harm to their brother so uh, uh, so much so that they believe that he is dead and they have lied to cover up this 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 innocent life they have uh, 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 covered this thing up even with their own father they have covered this this sin up and and they have never had to come to terms with it they have never uh, 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 been able to deal with it and so they've been going through the motions for years and never have been able to confront this issue um, and what they have done until now. And so uh, I would encourage you to read all of Genesis chapter 42 through chapter 45. Um, but Joseph understands that he is now uh, uh, in a position where he could have done some real harm to his brothers. He could have 
paid them back. Uh, uh, but while Joseph was in prison, uh, uh, if you will, he had learned patience and trust and compassion. And so his harshness toward his brothers was not revenge, but to test to discover the quality of their hearts uh, 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 had changed over the uh, intervening years. And so three times Joseph accused uh, his brothers of being spies and uh, each time they humbly uh, uh, defended uh, uh, themselves. But we can only imagine the agony that they suffered, uh, uh, not unlike Joseph's uh, when they put him in a dry cistern as his prison. Joseph also needed time to think and ensure himself that he would remain in God's will. So God can cause circumstances and situations to test the quality and genuineness of our relationship with him that are designed to strengthen and prepare us to fulfill the purposes he has for our lives. I believe you can find some context for this over in Jeremiah chapter 17. Uh, uh, but it should be noted here that at some point who we are and what we say we are is going to come under scrutiny. Uh, and so this famine, if you will, has brought about circumstances that uh, uh, sort of a boomerang, if you will, have brought these these brothers back to the very individual that they caused harm to. And this is the, 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 the subtlety of life. Uh, if I can share this with you, we never know whose hands we're going to fall in. We never know how God is going to bring things back uh, uh, or bring situations and cause us to come to a place of humility. And so here these family members are that have targeted, these brothers have targeted uh, 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 the one of the younger brothers and they have done harm to him but they thought that this thing would would never come to to the light of day they thought that this would this would be covered up for all time but but now this famine has caused them to uh, be face to face with the guy that they did the most harm to a family member if you will and so we need to be mindful as the people of God that we never know uh, 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 how God is going to uh, maneuver us in a way. And sometimes when we have caused harm to people, and this is why that we have to be careful for nothing, if you will, because we, we just don't have the, the insight into how God is going to maneuver. And just think about Christ, if we can just shift gears uh, uh, for just a minute. Think about Christ on the cross, praying for individuals who are crucifying him, who are doing things to him, and he is praying to his Father to forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And, and, and though Joseph is testing his brothers at this time, he has not executed uh, the type of punishment that he could have executed it. So he's operating uh, 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 under some guidance of things that he has learned uh, uh, going through his circumstances. And so those of us that are being tried right now, we should be learning uh, how to engage people in a way because we never know when we may meet these individuals again. Uh, uh, you think about a person uh, that's in the hospital who is unconscious. They don't know. They are totally at the mercy of those who are providing from, for them. They don't know who is administering care, but they are trusting that these individuals will do the right thing uh, because they are unable to care for themselves. And this is where uh, Joseph brothers find themselves in. They are, they are, uh, the famine is so severe. Uh, that they are on the road trying to buy food and now they are coming to the guy that they have done the harm to their own brother. The question is asked, what thoughts do you think were going through Joseph's mind when he recognized, recognized his brothers? Uh, but I mean in his humanity, uh, uh, he probably thought about revenge. 
uh, which is something we think about uh, uh, that comes to us uh, as a part of human nature when someone has done uh, done us wrong we want to get them back but on the the spiritual side of this he perhaps was thinking about God's grace that God kept him in his circumstance God kept him uh, and so now he is in a position to reciprocate he's in a position to to demonstrate uh, the type of characteristics that he has experienced God brought him out and not only did God bring him out God brought him out and placed him uh, in a place of authority and we uh, should never forget where the Lord have brought us from we we don't know we are just a a, a stone's throw away from from a care package uh, we are just a stone's throw away from 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 losing our health and our strength and losing our uh, homes and and jobs and having no food uh, uh, and certainly we just don't know when we might have to drive up and ask for help so it behooves us to to treat one another in a way uh, 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 understanding that God is at the helm here in this family and though it is dysfunctional God is using the, 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 the one who has been harmed to help those who are in need. And that's a beautiful story. Uh, but the second outline is entitled, Guilt Confessed. This is taken from Genesis 42, verses 18 through 22. The Bible says, On the third day Joseph said to them, Do this and you will live. For I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers stay here in prison while the rest of you go and take grain back to your starving households. Verse 20. But you must bring your youngest brother to me so that your words may be verified and that you may not die. This they proceeded to do. Verse 21. They said to one another, Surely we are being punished because of our brother. We saw how distressed he was when he pleaded with us for his life, but we would not listen. That's why this distress has uh, come on us. Verse 22, Reuben said, Didn't I tell you not to sin against the boy? But you wouldn't listen. Now we must give an accounting for his blood. So now they're blaming one another. Now they are pointing the fingers at one another that 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 now they're in a circumstance uh, they don't recognize Joseph and he's still driving this point home uh, 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 in testing them uh, and trying to get them to think about the things that they have done but but I think it's it's telling that after all of these years they believe that maybe somehow that what they have done is coming back to the surface and that they are being punished for these things and so now they are, they they are engaging in the blame game here that uh that maybe this is because we we harmed our brother we did something to him uh and now we have to give an accounting uh, for his blood. But if, in order for us to be saved, as I said earlier, we're gonna, I, I hope that you will uh, uh, look at this lesson in a way to uh, help us to understand how uh, confession uh, uh, and repentance uh, uh, work together in terms of us being saved. I want you to look at Psalm 32 in its entirety. Uh, 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 and also Acts chapter 13 uh, verses 24 and 25 uh, and then you know we want God to uh, forgive us right uh, uh, but we have to confess our sins the first epistle of John chapter 8 and 9 says if, if any man say he does not have a fault he is a lie. But if we if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. He will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. But 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 these individual these brothers here, they have never confronted this matter. Uh, they have swept it under the rug. And many times this is how we 
we treat God and this is how we treat one another. We don't want to recognize that we have done one another wrong and we don't want to apologize for those things. We don't want to reconcile for those things. But, 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 but what if Christ never forgave us? What if Christ was pulling our leg when he said that he uh, uh, forgave us of all of our sins and that he cast all of our sins in the sea of forgetfulness? What if he was pulling our leg and not telling us the truth about those things? How could we ever be free? How could we ever be forgiven? And so we know that God has thoroughly uh, and publicly uh, uh, punished his only begotten son for our sinfulness that we might have this right to the tree of life but in order for us to engage with God in a way that we might be saved we must put our cards on the table and this is what is happening to these brothers of Joseph uh, they're being forced if you will through this test uh, that Joseph is administering uh, to them is to put their cards on the table and on the third day of their imprisonment, Joseph executed his test. He acknowledged his fear of God and that uh, uh, altered uh, conditions of their test to prove their honesty. Only one brother would be held prisoner until the others returned with their youngest brother, uh, Benjamin. So Joseph's brothers were fearful because they knew that they were guilty before God for their past treatment of him. Their consciousness must have troubled them for years and this test brought their suppressed emotions to the surface. Can I tell you something about God? He's going to get to the matter. He's going to get to the root of the matter. He's going to get to the heart of what makes you tick. He's going to get to the heart and all of us can recognize the fact that say, that say we are saved, you know you have had to come to terms with, with who you are. You know that you have confessed your sins uh, 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 unto God. And this is something that we do uh, 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 daily, if you will, because we want to maintain that relationship and that fellowship with God. We don't want to break that uh, uh, with our sinful way. And so, uh, but their consciousness had to have troubled them for years. It had never, ever been dealt with. And that's what I mean about that unconfessed sin. When we try to hide from God that we don't uh, have a problem and we don't have anything that we need to talk to him about, we are fooling ourselves if we think that God doesn't know that our relationship with one another are estranged as brothers and sisters in Christ, even as this family, this family is all dysfunctional here and their relationship with one another, they have gone from uh, uh, what they thought was uh, uh, the demise of their brother. They've covered it up. They've lied to their dad. They have not come clean about this. Uh, 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 they, they didn't tell the whole accounting of what happened to their brother and how they were involved. But this is not how God works. God deals with the inside out. And so we have to deal with the things that, that we are trying to cover up, uh, if you will, if we want to embrace the forgiveness of God, if we want to embrace uh, a repentance, uh, which simply means that we have changed our minds. Uh, and so these individuals are now, because they're hungry, uh, uh, they are uh, uh, in, a, in a predicament now that, that God has allowed to come upon the land. Uh, uh, they, their households are in trouble because they don't have uh, 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 adequate uh, uh, provisions and now they've got to travel uh, and, and get some food and now here they are looking at the guy that they uh, set up to die. But here they are reaping what they have sown. Reuben, the oldest brother, uh, who failed to dissuade the others from harming Joseph, reminded them of God's judgment and retribution. They thought that they were guilty of murdering Joseph and now accounting for his blood was required. Uh, but what we see about these brothers and uh, in, 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 in how Joseph is handling them uh, they had not matured spiritually to the point to know him 
as a, a God both of judgment and forgiveness. And this is where I think that we are in many regard. Uh, it takes a mature Christian to confront um, uh, these type of discretions. When we have wronged one another, it takes a mature Christian to go to those individuals and, and family members and say, you know, I'm sorry for how I acted. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, please forgive me. Uh, for the things that high we have to, we have to actually do these things and when I was thinking about this uh, uh, this lesson uh, uh, and, and, and looking at this what Joseph is pulling out of his brothers that they have suppressed for years what is the basis of our forgiveness of one another uh, and so the basis is what we have received this is the foundation of forgiveness uh, uh, between us as brothers and sisters. We have to always remember that this is the way uh, uh, God has dealt with us, if I can use that term. But I, I thought about my life and I thought about the fact that uh, when the Lord saved me some years ago, one of the things that really stuck out to me was God was treating me as though I hadn't done, done anything wrong. He just began to handle me as though I had been in fellowship with him the whole time. He didn't bring up all of the things that I had uh, done wrong and how, you know, he, he wasn't reminding me uh, uh, daily of my sinfulness. He just picked me up and he turned me around and he washed me uh, with, 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 without uh, 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 me even recognizing uh, 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 how powerful his forgiveness was in my life. I knew I didn't deserve to be saved. I knew I didn't deserve to be uh, uh, called into the ministry. I certainly didn't deserve to have a Bible put in my hand. But God forgave me in such a way that, and, and, and I just, I always remember that over the years that he didn't have to treat me like this. And, and, and as we progress in this context here, what Joseph is going to ultimately do uh, for his brothers uh, is something that they don't deserve. But this is how God's grace works. Uh, we don't earn it. We don't deserve it. Uh, 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 there's nothing we can do to obtain it. Uh, uh, but these individuals, uh, uh, they had to deal with what they have done because now they are looking at Joseph and Joseph recognizes them. So uh, 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 he has an opportunity to teach them some things that he has learned. And we want to remember that. But they had not uh, matured spiritually. So a personal encounter uh, with him with God produces conviction and confession and will lead to repentance and restoration of fellowship with him I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 11 and I also want to give you uh, Hebrews chapter 10 verses 1 through 10 because I think it's important to note that one of the things that God has done with us he has cleansed our consciousness uh, uh, of the guilt uh, and that's very important uh, going forward that 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 we understand that uh, we we have been uh, forgiven in such a way and God has wiped that guilt away that we were carrying around with us like these uh, brothers are carrying around with them they're carrying around the guilt uh, of what they have done and, 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 and they have never had to deal with it and so and I also want to give you, and I'm actually going to read this because this is profound. This is in Romans chapter 3, uh, verse 23. And we traditionally quote the 23rd verse, but we don't go further. And I want to do that today. This is Romans chapter 3, uh, verses 23 through 26. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed 
to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. And so we need to just continue that thread to see how and what God did about us falling short or and having sinned and fallen short of the the glory of God and the only way God could deal with this would be to look past those things that we have done I hope I'm making sense to you today church but we have to look past the things that people are doing and and we can see uh, uh, truly that they don't understand and they don't have the knowledge of God that they are spiritually uh, uh, immature and so we have to learn how to do with them what God did for us which is to not hold anything against us and I, I, I just I, I just love this uh, uh, 25th verse God uh, whom God set forth as a propitiation for his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed that is huge I mean that is huge to know that God looked beyond our faults and saw our needs it is huge that we are running around today uh, uh, proclaiming salvation and that we are anointed and all these other things that we ascribe to but it would not be so if God had not looked beyond the things that we had done and allowed us to become established if you will allowed us to be anointed permitted us to have another chance and another chance and another chance uh, and so we have to do this and this is all Joseph is doing here and pushing his brothers to come clean he's just giving them a chance to get it right he's giving them an opportunity he is not so much looking at what they have done he have passed beyond the things that they have done and he's moving them in a direction where he can embrace them and so you will see this as you continue this thread of passage of scripture from the uh, 42nd chapter of Genesis but it goes on to say here uh, how can being how can being mistreated by others lead to self-examination and so we just gave you that today and there's so many scriptures that we could connect with this but we hope that you understand uh, 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 where you have been brought from uh, and, and, and how God has passed over the things that that you used to be in order to give you a chance at what he wanted you to be that's very important to understand our last outline is entitled compassion aroused this is taken from Genesis uh, chapter 42 uh, verses 23 through 25 and again from the NIV translation they did not realize that Joseph could understand them since he was using an interpreter he, he turned away from them and began to weep but then came back and spoke to them again he had Simeon taken from them and bound before their eyes Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain to put each man's silver back in his sack and to give them provisions for their journey you can see how God has worked with this man Joseph you can see how God has worked with his only begotten son Jesus uh, you know um, we we have to understand that God is full of mercy and compassion and that he recognizes that we are in desperate need uh, 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 of salvation and I believe it grieves God to know that uh, and to understand that that we are still rejecting him that we are still walking away from the only salvation that we will ever know uh, that we are still making conscious decisions to keep from our lips the very name the only name uh, that is given uh, that 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 by which men can be saved I believe it grieves God to to see us struggling 
carrying this type of baggage of sin that we've done to one another and we won't bring the case to him in order that he might deliver us from that guilt and 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 from that that thing that we have done and that there's so much forgiveness waiting on those who are out of fellowship and if you are listening today and you are not saved I want you to understand that you are the most important thing to God than you realize. I want you to understand today that it's because Christ died. It's because he had come into this world. He was seeking to save that which was lost. If you only could understand and embrace the fact, if you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sin, how critical you are to the mission of Christ. And this is why the gospel continues to go forward because God is concerned about you who are not saved. God is concerned about the fact that you don't have a relationship with him. God is concerned about us, even those of us in the body of Christ, that we won't forgive one another. God is concerned about the fact that we are still mistreating one another, even as brothers and sisters in Christ. God is concerned about this thing. And so this is, the, this is why this lesson, this typology here is so relevant for us today. It is huge for us to understand that, that, that how dare we not forgive one another when we are walking around and have been forgiven. How dare we not love one another when Christ has uh, exhibited the kind of love that he would uh, uh, give his life for, for things that he did not do. But for a lifestyle that he didn't engage in, that you and I could go free. And this is where society needs to take, our cultures need to take this into account. Christ died for us that we might exemplify the same characteristics amongst our brothers and sisters. And here these men all have come together. They have put one brother they believe to death. And, 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 and they won't even tell the truth about the matter they won't even deal with it but Joseph is working with them and I love this how he embraces them uh, in this context Joseph gave orders huh? you can see God at work here Joseph gave orders to fill their bags with grain and to put each, put each man's silver back in his sack and to give them provisions for their journey God doesn't want your money. He owns everything. Psalm 24 tells us that, right? God doesn't need you and you cannot pay God for what he has done. Joseph doesn't want anything from his brothers other than them to deal with what they have done. Joseph wants to restore something uh, uh, in his brothers that's, that's worth more than the money. Uh, that they brought to buy grain. Joseph wants to restore more uh, uh, with his brothers than than the provisions uh, 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 that they might need. And so he's looking past what they have done. And he could have done them harm, but he said, no, God could have wiped us out right he could have allowed us to keep on sleeping this morning uh, 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 but he woke us up early this morning clothed in our right mind we have the actions of our limbs and a reasonable portion of health and strength and the blood is still running warm in our vein and we ought to have a mind to do the things that uh, 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 that 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 would demonstrate that we have received the love of God so as to administer that to our brothers and sisters and let me just say this if we won't do it then how can we expect the world to see Christ how can we expect the world to understand the gift of Christ if we don't administer it to one another and so Joseph is giving gifts instead of a uh, 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 harm to his brothers Joseph is giving and being a blessing instead of being a stumbling block but he is teaching his brothers a lesson. And I can tell you this from personal experience. God has taught me a lesson. Many lessons in my walk with him. There is none greater than him. Nobody could have done what God has done for us in terms of saving us. Right? From, from all of our various uh, walks of life. He brought us out with a mighty and an outstretched arm. 
So I hope, trust, and pray there's so much we could talk about today and what Joseph did with his brothers, but I could see Jesus all over his life. I could see God working out the love and the grace and the peace of God through this man in a way that uh, 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 he could have administered vengeance, but some kind of way along the way he learned that God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. So we don't have to worry about what people do, but we have to stay in a position uh, uh, that we might be able to help somebody. Don't treat one another in such a way that you can't help them the very next day because you might need them. You never know who might have to give you a cup of water or, 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 or a plate of food. So we need to understand these things. We never know who might have to call 911 for us because we cannot call for ourselves. So we have to be able to understand this here, uh, this type of lesson because this type of thing is going on today. We are still putting people in places and causing them harm. We are putting people in places and may not be literally murdering them, but murdering their influence. Uh, we are doing a lot of things to one another that we should not do. Uh, we should not engage. So I want to just offer this prayer for us as we seek to close now because uh, I could not read this lesson and study this lesson without looking in the mirror. I could not go through this lesson without seeing what the Lord had done for me. And it just made me reflect on how God has been uh, so good to all of us, certainly have been good to me. And I don't deserve the things that God have done in my life. But I'm certainly grateful he gave me a, a, another chance, right? Because if he had taken me in my sins, I would not have been ready to see the Lord. Father, we thank you for this lesson today. We thank you for the hearers today. We thank you for those, our brothers and sisters, and we thank you for just bringing to light that it matters how we treat one another, to bring to light that we need to get it right with you and we need to get it right uh, with our fellow man. Father, if we've done anything wrong, uh, uh, certainly to our fellow man, and we, if we have offended you, please forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us a mind to seek you out before it's everlasting too late. We are in troubled times today and we need to make sure that we're calling on you in a day and a time that our prayers might be heard today. We are praying, oh God, that you would look and have mercy on the leadership uh, of this country uh, from the top to the bottom. Father, we just thank you for each and every nation. We're praying for those around us, the country. We're praying for all of the first responders. We're praying for families that have been so affected today. We need healing today, certainly from uh, the things that are on the outside, but we need healing on the inside. And Father, we just pray that we would be uh, the type of people that you're calling for. We're praying that you would continue to cleanse us from our unrighteousness and we shall be clean. And we'll be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. So again, until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.